Hey friends, it's Daniela Urbani, the host of the Mom Curious Podcast, and today my guest is me. It's just me. Hi. So we're going to do a quick solo podcast. These are pretty short, so if you're walking down the street or driving in the car, just know it. Shorter than usual. Last year, I shared um, about my trip to Israel, my first international trip away from my kids um, since I had my daughter, um, and certainly since COVID. And I went back this year. It was a little different because I wasn't a participant um, at the Tel Aviv Institute. I sort of um, was, I was a speaker. I, I was a speaker. Um, which was pretty cool. And I facilitated um, some of the workshops as well. So that was also very special. Um, But I wanted to tell you about one of the um, guests. Uh, I say one, um, meaning the organization, the Parent Circle. They were one of the um, speakers as well. They weren't a guest, they were a speaker. And um, I wanted to tell you about them because I think it's pertinent to our work here. So the Parent Circle um, brings together bereaved families of uh, Israeli families and Palestinian families. They come together, I'd say, in the hopes for peace, but really in the hopes uh, for personal healing. Um and the reason why I, I bring it to the podcast is because, first of all, I'm endlessly grateful to have witnessed them not once but twice. And I wanted to open up that experience to you, my people. Big thank you to the Tel Aviv Institute and to Chen Mazig, who, uh, who organizes these incredible labs. Um... I think it's pertinent to the work here because I really believe that mothers have a really powerful place in society and part of that power, not power over, but power within is our ability to tap into enormous empathy and striving for peace at every level. I think this is true for many people, but I witnessed two mothers one of a fallen soldier and one of a six-month-old baby who both lost their sons to the conflict in Israel and Palestine. And somehow they were able not only to come together, I mean, which is mind-blowing in and of itself, but to share their stories with the world. So they actually get up on stage really all over the world to speak in the name of peace, in the honor of their sons, as an example of what is possible and what is necessary. Each one told the story of their son's death, which I know hearing that is extremely painful. They went into detail and they needed to, partially for their own healing, but also so that we know the humanity in each of these families. And I know that for many of us, 
particularly in the United States where, you know, most of my audience lives. Of course, we see the humanity. Of course. But, you know, one of the first things that Lila, uh, the Palestinian mother, said when she stood up so beautifully and bravely and generously was she looked at her phone and she saw that there were essentially death threats um, and a barrage of um, hateful messages her way. She looked at her phone and then she looked up at us and she said, there are people in this world who are invested in this conflict, who do not want peace, who do not want me to be here. And she stood firmly and knew that what she was doing in sharing the loss of her son, the loss of her own self in many ways, to um, a room full of open-hearted advocates. She knew that this was necessary for her community and for the world at large. That's how she opened her talk. And when there was a Q&A, my friend Nicole said, I um, sing in Arabic and in Hebrew. May I offer my services to heal your hearts and communities? And she, Lila, the Palestinian mother who lost her son to this conflict, said... Music was always a very big part of her life. And she went on to muse a bit, and she said, there is nothing we can't do, especially as women and as mothers. And I took that as a pearl of wisdom back with me from Tel Aviv to give to you. There is nothing we can't do because we have access to perspective, not just in the present moment, but we have access in our own selves as mothers to past generations, to those stories that we hold, that we either want to pass down to the future or heal up and seal up right now. We have perspective that one day we won't be here anymore, but our children will. And what will we leave them with? I was so inspired and moved and heartbroken for these women. But I saw their sisterhood. You know, I actually have um, have had the honor of seeing the parent circle once before, and it was actually with the same Israeli mother who was magnificent, of course, strong and kind and advocating for all sides. And she was actually with um, a father who spoke, Bassam, that first time I saw her speak. But there was something about two women coming together for me, for me, just for me, and maybe for you too, because our audience is mostly women. Although, hi, Mark. (laughs) There's one guy I know who who listens. Hi, Mark. Um, And maybe maybe you're you're a man too, and you're more than welcome, but really more than welcome. But there was something about that sisterhood that really spoke to me. If we can come together and set aside our differences 
and create birth even, a new world for ourselves and our children. If we can empower each other, not power over anyone, not power over men, certainly not, but if we could come together like these two mothers, I really believe we could create a heaven on earth. If these two mothers who lost their sons could look each other in the eye and love each other, they called each other their best friends, they had not known the other quote-unquote side before coming together at the parent circle. And that's how hate festers. That's how violence continues on. If we don't know each other, then we could never love each other. It's part of the reason why most of the time I sit back and listen to other women's stories here on the podcast because I really believe that if we knew each other, if we could see each other and hear each other, if we could come together, we could leave this world after 120 years a better place. If these women at the parent circle can do it against all odds, really all odds, we certainly can. And wouldn't it be amazing if we could support them? You can actually by checking out their website, theparentscircle.org. You can donate. They actually have an American Friends of the Parent Circle Families Forum. It's a 501c3. I'm not affiliated at all. I'm just inspired and very thankful to have been able to witness their grace, their dedication to peace, their forgiveness, their friendship. And I'm really very grateful to the Tel Aviv Institute um, and Chen Mazik, who, who organized this. I hope this inspires you, friends, to create a more peaceful world. First, of course, starting with yourself, myself, <laughs> ourselves, our families, and then spilling out into our communities. This is Daniela Rabani from the Mom Curious Podcast. I always love hearing from you at Daniela Rabani on Instagram. And please do rate and review, share, subscribe. That's how we stay on the air, which we want to do. I hope you have a great week and I'll see you next Tuesday. Thank you, as always, for listening to the Mom Curious Podcast. My name is Daniela Ravani. I am your host, and I would love to continue this conversation at Daniela Rabani on Instagram. And if you'd be so kind to rate and review, share this podcast, I would be just really grateful. Catch you next time, every Tuesday on the Mom Curious Podcast. Produced by Hoff Studios. You can find them at Hoff Studios on Instagram as well. All right, have a great day.